At this point in the semester, I bet everybody who's listening to this is heading into the systematic mineralogy portion of mineralogy. And to do that, you need to know the physical properties that you can use to identify minerals with confidence. I'm going to have a series of, I think it's going to be three little lectures that go over the textbook pages 19 to 36 that introduce most of the physical properties and optical properties that minerals have that we can use to identify them. Starting off, we're going to just get into crystal shape, and that's what this lecture is going to be all about. So it's going to be about crystal shape. There's going to be no pictures that I insert. We're drawing everything. So crystal shape. Get out your colors. Get out your good drawing pencils. The, when I say crystal shape, I may also say morphology. Those are synonyms safe within the mineralogy community to use interchangeably. Underneath crystal shape, we have a couple other words that are all kind of similar, and one is going to be habit. Habit, crystal shape, morphology, you could almost make a triangle here in your mind, um, because they all mean about the same thing. But habit, we're going to define as the general shape of a mineral. The general shape of a mineral. And as the lecture continues, we're going to get more and more specific. There are three different main types of habits. One is called euhedral. Then there's subhedral, and then finally there's anhedral. And these words are used all the time at the highest research level down to mineralogy class. Euhedral, the U stands for like good, and what we mean here is that the shape is completely bound by crystal faces. We would call this a good-looking crystal. Maybe a quartz crystal would be something like this. Let's see. All right, we do have to draw a lot today. So if we were to draw like a hexagonal quartz crystal, we might have something like this. And then on the bottom side of the crystal, we also have crystal faces. Everywhere there's crystal faces. It's completely euhedral. Now, subhedral is partial. It's going to be partly bound. Partial. So I just got caught in between two words there, partially and partly. You can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to go here, partly bound by crystal faces. And if we were to draw that, well, we could like start having a crystal shape, but then have a bit of irregularity in it as well. Okay, so this one is partially euhedral, partially anhedral, and so we would just call the crystal subhedral. All right, and so then anhedral is the simplest one. This is bound by regular rounded faces. You could say lax crystal faces as well, but instead let's change the definition slightly and just say bound by irregular faces. And what would that look like? I am just basically you could draw a blob on your uh, page. Okay, so this one over here was sub subhedral. This one is euhedral, and this one is anhedral. Now those are our kind of general phrases. We need to go in now with more and more specificity. To do that, we're going to go big B. This is going to be the idea of a form. And the definition of a form is the regular appearance has a regular geometric shape. And we can put a name to that geometric shape. So let's say um, appearance with a uh, let's say regular geometric shape. And when something has a form, they are all euhedral. Okay, these are euhedral crystals, and basically these are just adjectives that we can use to describe euhedral crystals. And we're just going to go with a bunch of numbers under here, and this is where we're finishing lecture, but we have about 13 to get through. I want to go one per minute or less. So the first rule is that there are um, we could say use form names like cube. So use actual form names from crystallography. If you can do that, do it. And I'm going to put in one little addition here. Let's say use closed form names from crystallography. So these are things like cube, pyritohedron. Octahedron, right? You get the idea. 
dodecahedron, etc. Now, if you can't do that, then we get to start using our special adjectives. And the first one is prismatic. Many crystals we study are prismatic, and what it means is that it is columnar, or one dimension is longer than the other. So I'm going to say that one dimension is longer. So something like an emerald crystal or a, a long quartz crystal, these are prismatic or columnar crystals. So let's say we have like, a, here's our substrate, and we're growing a series of crystals out of that substrate. You can see that the c-axis in each of these is longer. And I'm just going to make these little quartz crystals. Each one of them, you can draw whatever you like, your favorite mineral. But here I'm drawing these little quartzes. The c-axis in the quartz, hexagonal quartz crystal is longer than the a's, and so it is a prismatic crystal. Next type is called lamellar. Lamellar means page-like, and so sometimes we use the word micaceous as the best synonym for it, and these are like pages of a book. So let's just say layers, layers, or pages of paper. If we were to draw this, it's going to separate into thin sheets very easily. So let's just say we have like a three-dimensional shape. Okay, we're kind of drawing like an irregular cube uh, kind of shape like this, right? And then what we have here is it's separated into, oh, that's not a very good line. Draw these really thin lines. Oh, thinner than that. Thinner than that and straighter than that. Like sheets of mica and then have them come across the backside as well, right? Like pages in a book. That's what this one's supposed to look like. Bladed is our next category, and there's no organization of this. This just happens to be the way I've written them down. Bladed are flattened elongate crystals. They're going to have a little bit more depth and width than micaceous, and they're going to be a little flatter than prismatic. So you can see they're, they're somewhat interrelated with one another. Here's maybe like a drawing of a bladed crystal. We could have a, here's a crystal in front, and behind this crystal, I'm gonna just draw a couple like stacks of more crystals. There's, there's not much depth to these crystals. They're just kind of flat things that are stacked on top of one another. You're gonna pick whichever words you want that seems best. Right? This is a descriptive part of science, not quantitative so much. Fibrous is our next type. This is thin, flexible, thin and flexible fibers. Asbestos would be a great example of a fibrous type of crystal. And so to draw this, maybe what we would see is like a lot of times these fill veins. So here's like the walls of our vein. And between the walls of our vein, we get thin, flexible fibers of a mineral growing perpendicular to the wall of veins. That's what we mean by fibers. You're going to get your hands on some in your class, I bet. Number six, acicular. Acicular means needle-like. There's a lot of acicular crystal morphologies out there. We could have a substrate like this, and then from it, a bunch of radiated, really sharp needle-like crystals would be described as an acicular crystal form. Number seven, dendritic. Dendritic means branching, like branches on a tree. Branching pattern. Copper may have this, or a mineral called pyrolusite is also dendritic. We think like you could like draw a river here, and from the river we have tributaries, and off the tributaries we have more smaller tributaries, and it's this pattern, right, of branching dendrites that is dendritic. All right, so take your time, put in all the branches. Your notes are probably starting to look pretty good right now with all these drawings, aren't they? Number eight. We're almost done with this now. Botryoidal. It's a fun one to say. 
botryoidal. It almost doesn't look crystalline. This one looks more alien. And what it, it, it means is rounded bumps. Rounded bumps or like a bunch of grapes. That's kind of a phrase that I have used teaching with effectiveness. Bunch of grapes. How do we draw something that looks botryoidal? Well, we could draw like crystals that almost look biologic growing off of some substrate. If you were to break one of these botryoidal crystals open, you'd probably see a radiating structure with crystals going away from a center point. All right, this is kind of what botryoidal tends to look like inside, but it doesn't have to. Number nine is globular. It's not that different from botryoidal. Globular. Let's see. Smaller packed conjoined spheres. I even have written down transitional to botryoidal. So let's put this word here. Transitional. And we have smaller packed spheres on a surface. So if we were to draw this... Maybe we have like some broken rock surface here. And there are little globules of crystals kind of growing. I'm just trying to make this look three dimensional. I might be failing slightly. But all right, we have these little globules growing off of that surface. If you had like a good pencil shade and you could like shade part of this to make it look rounded. Oh, that's too artsy for me. Okay, two more. Massive. Massive is the one when there is no really other word to say because it's a very fine-grained aggregate. What this means is that you just have a bunch of really tiny crystals all grown together, packed together. And so you have this chunk, doesn't have to be so circular, and it's just full of tiniest little crystals. Maybe you can't even see them with the naked eye. Maybe you can see them with a hand lens. Well, that would be a massive crystal. And what's transitional to that, I can put a little arrow here that says transitional, is granular. And so granular is also an aggregate that's coarse grained. So we're going to say here, um, sand sized, coarser aggregate. Something like a marble is composed of an of granular aggregate. How do we do this? We need to draw a bunch of... I'd prefer these not to be round. You know, I'd actually prefer them to be polygons. If you're going to take the time to draw this, draw them in as polygons. So they're almost like an aggregate of euhedral crystals, maybe subhedral. It could be, sub, it could be anhedral as well if you just got lazy like I started to and just drew circles. Okay, so that, that's it for the main 11. We're just going to put here, we're going to put other. You'll find other phrases out there. One of them is like banded, uh, concentric. There's a whole host of other adjectives that no one's going to get mad at you for using. They're just concentric. I'm sure I spelled that. I did. Concentric. An example like might be a geode. Let's just have this be our last drawing. Here's our geode, and in the middle of the geode, we have got these beautiful euhedral crystals growing into a void space. And we have a banded, concentric kind of growth of quartz that fills the rest of this. And, and they tend to be like agate with different colors. All right, that would be an example of a crystal form that we haven't quite included yet.